Hey there, Dengas Chu here. Today's video is about plumbing up the raw water side of the trawler's cooling system and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. One of the next main jobs I've got to do before I can get this engine running properly is get some raw water cooling to make sure the coolant gets cooled. So the system I'm focusing on today is where seawater comes in from overboard, goes through the heat exchanger to in turn cool the coolant that flows through the engine block itself. I also get on and finish a couple of other small jobs, which reminds me, I haven't actually had a look at the to-do list I wrote for a little while. So we might quickly just cross off the things that are already done from that. All right, this is my to-do list. There was a small storm that kind of got it wet. Maybe I should just write a new one. This second page was still intact though. All right, not a huge amount I can actually cross off this list, unfortunately. I did do the gussets. Um, I don't need to make the alignment cup anymore because I'm not going that way. More about that later. Uh, Plumbing is really what we're doing today, which will include this. I have wired the starter circuit. We saw that last week. Haven't done the shut-off solenoid, haven't done the oil pressure gauge, haven't done the exhaust, haven't installed the e box. Move the engine forward a little bit. Just about everything else still needs to be done. Let's presume most things that got done were on this. While we're here quickly looking at some paperwork stuff, here um, I noticed that with the PRM, we were talking about whether it was going forward or reverse. But when I put the lever backwards, I do get clockwise rotation though. So it is fine the way it is, the way it was, um, which means we've got our clockwise rotation on a 402, which is giving us this way. All right, back to our list. First thing I end up doing when I get to the boat is weld in the shims. All right, gonna have a big clean up with some acetone. A lot of junk from grinding and whatever has ended up on these oil absorbent mats. Also, this one caught fire under the engine. I'm a little bit surprised and disappointed at just how flammable these oil absorbent mats are. Obviously they're oil based, that's what makes them absorb oil and repel water but I'm gonna do a bit more homework. I might replace them with a different product. That just went up with a spark, it just started burning. So that's not very uh, encouraging. Not the sort of thing I really wanna have underneath the engine. All right, let's get some primer onto all this. While I'm here waiting for that paint to dry, another viewer mentioned that they uh, did an update of the software on the rain rain. It made a huge difference. Everything, you know, universally got better. So I've just connected it to my phone as a hotspot. Settings. Uh, getting started update software. There we go, right in front of me. Check online. Start. This device. Update. Downloading, oh yeah, fair chunk, 0.8 of a gig, so we'll let that go for a while and get this thing updated. One more job off the list. Ah, speaking of little jobs, one thing I want to do is uh, this bit of tube to stop it chafing is actually past the roller, so I'm going to undo this and pull that up further getting things like this out, if you just twist the layer of the rope, it'll separate a bit. You can get these sort of uh, oh, splices undone. All right. So we want this up about here, really. Should wait for slack tire to do this, shouldn't I? Just because you want to do a job at a certain time doesn't mean you can. Another little job I want to do is undo this arm for the shutoff and rotate it a few degrees. The only way to really pull it, like you can't have 
a cable coming this way and very easily pull it. You kind of need to be pulling pretty much at 90 degrees. So we need to rotate this arm a little bit this way because I can't really mount anything up in this direction. So, it's interesting, must really rely on the uh, tension because it's not splined, keyed, anything like that. Anyway, we want it about here and obviously tighten this up pretty snug otherwise it's just going to spin on that shaft. This spring reminds me of a part of mechanics I don't miss at all, which is drum brakes. There we go. Yeah, it's fine still. Cool. All right, let's go there. I've just been undoing this uh, old coolant hose because it wasn't quite long enough to clear the exhaust. It's pretty much the lowest point of the cooling system, unfortunately. Anyway, no big deal. Of course now I've got coolant all over my primer which I'm going to have to uh, clean and dry properly before I put the top coat on. Wow, 20 litres. Almost the entire cooling system drained out. Oh well, that's alright, we can put it back in. While we're here, I'll clean this up again and I'll get some just some RTV gasket goo on here because I'm still dripping a little bit. All right, another little acetone wipe. What's this, some sort of RTV gasket maker? Let's see how that goes. Okay, given we're not wrestling with this engine so much anymore, I might just do a quick service on it. Next job was to start measuring up to mount the C strainer in place. We need to make two brackets that come along and then up but we need to screw them onto the board at different points so the board's level. Okay, so distance apart is 400. Remember that, 400's good. And the angle, if I'm parallel with the plumbing behind it, looks like about a 70 degree back. It's gonna keep it pretty upright. Okay, found a bit of angle line that I think will be good for making these brackets. So let's use this. I might give it a bit of a clean up first before we start. Yes, let's do that. What do you think ladies, clean first? Tricky to get to the inside, but I've got that wire wheel on an angle grinder on the boat. So I think I will just make them, then we'll clean them and paint them on the boat. No big deal. Now, the plan is to just have a shortish bit of angle here, tall a bit up. This is our 70 degree angle to get this pretty near to plumb and we need two of them. So, no rocket science. What I'm thinking is if I take my piece, we want to make a 70 degree. So if I do 35, 35, cut in the middle, put this one on that end, this one on that end, that should be all we need. All right, let's put on that grain disc I found. Didn't steal it, found it. And uh, 940, what's that, 470. And cut this in half. Oh, before I forget. Went to the auto parts store, but still had trouble finding a way of adapting this. I could find a BSP to BSP uh, adapter, so really close, but 
This is NTP, so I did get a BSP plug that's just completely solid. So if anybody has or knows where you can get an NTP tap, I guess I'd drill out a large enough section that I could get a socket, like a, you know those sockets with the gap in them so you can put the wire, the sort of thing you use for O2 sensors or whatever. So if I can drill enough of it out, then I guess the other thing is I want to tap it so that the casing comes in low so that the probe actually extends into the stream of the coolant. The adapters I found it went in and even if it had been the right thread the probe wouldn't have extended past the end of the adapter. So it's going to take a little bit of machine to get that right. Somebody sent me a message I think from West Pennant Hills around that area saying they were geared up to do this. Um, but I can't remember where I saw the message, whether it was email, Instagram, YouTube comments, whatever, I don't know. So if you're still around, let me know. Hmm, kind of works, kind of doesn't. I could cut another angle on this end and get them to match up. But because I always love minimizing cutting steel, uh, if we go, so this is the original of this end. If we go this end, we're opposite. Uh, that might work better actually. Even if we weld out to here, it means it can still sit on the railing. It's not as strong, but let's be honest, it's just a sea strainer. All right, they're all welded up. It'll be interesting to see if there is a way you can do only three cuts and end up with these two brackets, but with the angle welded along both sides. Not quite sure, can't be bothered thinking about it, particularly given that's gonna be more than strong enough. Okay, what I wanna do now is I'm gonna be mounting this on the board, but I need this outlet facing off to the side, so we're going to back off these brackets, rotate it, clamp it up again. Alright, that's the orientation we want. What we also have, due to popular demand, is a cooling system like a recovery, a bit of a puke tank. So, let's open this up. Unfortunately, it's the only one they had, and it turns out it's only for cars like commercial trucks and buses, not boats, but we'll make do. All right, we'll ditch the hose clamp that came with it and put a stainless one on. Can actually bring it out a little bit further. I may mount it like this if there's room. I may end up mounting it higher if there's not. So I think what I'll do is I'll drill the bracket like here and here, which is still perfectly adequate if we use the whole thing, but it'll buy us a bit of space. I think it's the most versatile drilling pattern. I know people on the internet love seeing satisfying things, so we may as well peel the back of this off now. Make it all relatively nice again. All right, let's cut this quickly with a circular saw. Somewhat predictably, these brackets are very slightly small in the bolts I want, so I'll drill through those as well. Of course, I did buy some spring washers for both the exhaust and for this type of stuff. And then left them in Artie's car, so we'll put them on later. Although if we crank them up, by the time they bury into the plastic a little bit, they may not come undone. Friday now, beautiful morning, so let's get on, clean up these brackets, get them painted.
Gonna jump down, do a test fit with the board in a minute, but I'll quickly just screw the recovery tank onto the board. I had marked it for holes here, but I'm actually gonna just push it over slightly now that we've made the board a little bit wider. I'm gonna raise it up to the point where this existing hole goes through the bottom hole here, so it's gonna sit about there on the bracket. Because of the alignment, I think I need just enough hose to be able to do the turn. If I have it too low, I won't be able to make the bend and get it in. All right, just straighten this up. Just got the clearance there, that was lucky. Anyway, drill, put the second bolt in. These brackets aren't even, so we need to find the right spacing for the rib and also which way they go here so that it's level. So we'll bring it back down, sort that out. What I think I might do first is mark and drill this rib so that we can lock one side in position and give it a little bit of support while we'll do the other side. Just gonna paint the inside of those drilled holes now. Next thing I need to do is cut this hose to the right length. So let's go here to say here. Just mark this quickly. probably get the handle of this screwdriver down through this seacock. I'm going to open it and just make sure it's not blocked with oysters or anything since we've been sitting here. Before we do that though, just in case things go horribly wrong, we're going to have to get bilge right into his life jacket. Okay, good to go. I think it's fine. Plenty of water flow, so that's all right. Okay, now, let's see what to do with a bit of hose. Oh, here it is. Um, let's see if it's flexible enough to get onto both, both of those uh, barbs. Uh, let's go. Just mounting the jab sco now. It was a little bit fiddly to get in, but of course the camera is off. That's all right. You missed all my complaining. Just get this one bolt a little bit snug. Then we'll get the others in. Tiny dob of grease for corrosion and a lock washer for retention. gasket for behind here was a part of the service kit so that was handy. It's in, you can see the blades bent this way because it rotates down this way so it draws in from this side, squeezes out this side. All right, what I'm going to do now is fill the intake side with some water paste lubricant which will help prime it and protect it until water comes through so it's not running dry for a period of time. Yes, it is standard KY jelly, that type of thing. True story. I went to buy it today. I went to the shop and uh, Vicky texted me and goes, can you get three zucchinis while you're there? So you go to the counter with a tube of KY and three zucchinis. You can't make that stuff up, can you? All right. Just gonna fill the intake side. Okay. You have fun in there. I'm not gonna do paper gaskets here. You'll see when they go on. They're actually a really odd mismatched pair. All right, just get rid of any excess so it doesn't end up inside the pump. So there's only two bolts on both of these, the intake 
and the output. Couldn't quite get the socket on here, so we'll just finish this one up with an open-ended spanner. Once again, just a little bit of grease on the bolt for corrosion and a spring washer for retention. This is just another 90 degree that sends it forward towards the heat exchanger. So, how can we fit this in? This way seems best. Originally there was a bit of copper pipe that went in here with two bits of hose and four hose clamps joining it all. I'm struggling to see why I wouldn't just buy another piece of hose like this, have two hose clamps and just go end to end. I think that actually makes more sense to me. Frustratingly, it seems to go over the filler cap. I must double check some old videos and make sure that is the case. I can of course take the rocket cover off and just pour oil in there, but a little bit uh, frustrating nonetheless. Anyway, I think I do like the idea of the longer hose. Um, let me see how many hose clamps I've got. Nowhere near enough is the answer anyway. So, I'm thinking we run down the road. The intake side of the pump is gonna have this two inch 90 degree elbow and then come down to the one and a half inch reducer, which is the size of the seacocks I can get, the biggest seacocks I could get actually. All right, we'll get this one on. This is our hose from the sea strainer to the pump. All right, over here, this is gonna come onto here. To be honest, it could probably be a little bit shorter. I might trim it, but I'm actually out of hose clamps. I thought I had more of that size and I don't. So I think this is as far as we're gonna get this week, unfortunately. That was the bilge pump shearing home time. So, seacock closed. Bracket's really strong, I'm really happy with this. I think it came out well. Well, thanks for watching. I'm gonna run down to the auto parts store tomorrow and get some more radiator hose, which I'm using as the cooling hose, essentially. Uh, some more clamps, and we'll get this raw water cooling system finished. I also ordered all the bits I need for the exhaust from Hornsby Performance Mufflers, guy up there called Gary, really nice guy. He helped gave me a you know, good hand trying to sort of figure out how I should go about it. And uh, then we'll get that installed as well. Before we're ready to go though, on our first major cruise, I've got a couple of things I'm upgrading. Both of them actually Vetus items. I'm going to go with a dual fuel filter system, higher flow and the ability to swap between filters and change filters on the go without switching the engine off, which is pretty good for when you're offshore. The other thing is a Vetus coupling that can withstand a couple of degrees of misalignment. The idea is you get it as lined as well as you can spot on, but because we've gone from a hard mount on the rails to the Polyflex mounts that have a little bit of give in them, it means that as the engine sort of loads up and, and twists a bit, we can throw our you know, alignment out. So the idea is that this new Vetus coupling can allow that to happen without it being a problem. The nice thing about it is that it can fit in to the amount of space I've got. Previous ones I'd looked at, sort of full universal CV joint type things just weren't gonna fit. So this appears to be a reasonably straight swap kind of product. I've gotta do one job which is to find a sleeve to go from my 50 mil tapered um, end on the prop shaft to either a 60 or a 70 mil straight end just with the, the key in it. So I've got to find someone who can make that for me and once we've got that, we're kind of good to go. All right, well, those things coming up soon, so take care and I'll catch you then, bye. <laughs>Funny, one thing I'll say about D-Squad is I don't mind grinder noises, all that kind of stuff. You think of chickens being chickens, and they are. They're easily spooked, but they seem to always hang around when I'm working in the workshop, don't you? You don't seem to mind industrial noises at all. I don't know if I mentioned, poor old Dottie, you can see she's missing bits of her comb. She got attacked by a bush turkey and it pecked oh. her comb off her head, the poor thing. Took her ages to come back out of the uh, 
hut she hid away for a long time. I eventually trapped the turkey and took it back to the mainland. But once she realized it wasn't around anymore, she uh, perked up. So broken, broken leg, pecked head. Daisy's the only one that's uh, remained unscathed so far. It's a hard life as a chicken, isn't it? It's all right, Daffy, just sit down. Take a load off. I've got work to do. Mm, that's what I said too, Dottie. That's it, bit of preening. Make yourself look beautiful. I should get a little wheel, shouldn't I? At least you're getting your feathers back now, aren't you? After molting, you don't look so skinny anymore. All right. Let's do some more work. Actually, you've already seen the work. This is the end of the video, so... That doesn't work at all, does it?